If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello and welcome again to another edition of Vacation Rental Success. And this is number 34. And the summer's really moving on now. I can't believe how quickly it all goes. It's, yeah, a little bit sad, really. We're we're, getting up to the end of July and then we've got a few weeks of August and then that's it. Summer's over and we can start moving on towards another season. And that's always an exciting time for me. And we're already planning our annual road trip, which will take us this year down to the panhandle of Florida and uh, and back again. And we do it over about six weeks. We'll be stopping in Ohio, uh, two weeks in Kentucky. We go to a wonderful state park in Kentucky where we just tuck ourselves away in the woods for two weeks. And, and I get a lot of writing done. And, and I've got a, quite a few things that need finishing and um, several new projects that I'm starting soon that will probably be right in the middle of when we get down to Kentucky. Then we're off to a um, place on the Florida panhandle called Carabel, which is in an area they call the Forgotten Coast of Florida. And, and it's one of those beautiful stretches of coastline with no high rises, uh, no developments. It's just as it was uh, in the really in the 50s, 60s, 70s, hasn't changed very much since then. And and that's a bit of ocean time before we come heading back. One of the reasons I mention our road trip is that I choose our RV sites really based on the on the reviews that I see on a site called RV Park Reviews. And it's very important to me because there's certain things we really, really need when we're on vacation, even in an RV, which is pretty much self-contained. My number one requirement is having internet access. I continue uh, through our period of vacation to to work and I need to have that contact. In fact, we, we tend to go away around about the third week of September and the business building up to the Canadian Thanksgiving, which is the second Monday in October, is always a busy, busy time. So I do need to have that internet access. And one thing that really, really irks me is if if we see a site on RV Park Reviews or we choose a site where it says it has internet access and then we get there and find it's pretty much non-existent or you only get it if you go up to the office and sit outside their office door. That's that's just no good. That that doesn't work for me. I've I've got to be connected when I get up in the morning and I'm an early riser, so often up at four thirty, five o'clock. I don't want to have to get in the truck and drive often, you know, a kilometer or you know, maybe half a mile, three quarters of a mile to the office to go and sit outside with my laptop. I want to have that connection on my couch where I can sit with with a cup of morning coffee and uh, and get connected and start working. So it was interesting when an article came out today and it was in fact <clears throat> including an, an interview that I did with a journalist oh, several weeks ago and totally forgot about it. And the article's Canadian Property Management, part of the REMI network. And the web address is um, REMINetwork.com. So I guess that's that's what it's called, is the REMI network. And I had given this, uh, I'd, I'd done this interview several weeks ago, in fact, before we started into, the, into um, high season. And the journalist was asking questions about how I thought the vacation rental market had changed over the past few years. And if I, if I was seeing changes in the Canadian market and how Canadian uh, 
property owners are dealing with those changes. So I'm going to put a, a link to that article in the show notes, and I'd love to hear what you think, because what, what's in that article is really the topic of the episode today, which is, is really, this is just me. I, I don't have anybody I'm interviewing today because I wanted to talk through this particular issue about changing expectations, rising expectations, and how owners are dealing with them. I've just noticed this over the past few weeks with families going in and out of our properties. And I guess so far, we're four, four weeks into the high season. We've probably had mm, four, 500 families um, going in and out of places. And, and we are getting some feedback. Of course, we're getting feedback and we're getting reviews. And I'm very pleased to, to report that the majority of the reviews are absolutely fantastic because we've got some amazing, amazing owners that have their properties registered with us. But on occasion, I see a review of one of our properties where the guest has been badly let down. And it's often over something that is easily, so easily rectifiable. It's something that could have been done long before the guest went in. And it always disturbs me and saddens me that our guests have poor experience uh, because of it. What I'm going to do is talk about 10 different areas where expectations are rising and and how easy it is for individual owners to meet those expectations by just making a minor change or making a little amendment in their systems or processes or to some degree becoming more tolerant and adaptable to the changing nature of of this market so let me just kick off really by by talking a little bit about our own unique niche here up in Ontario because it's it's not like Orlando or the Outer Banks or the the Florida Panhandle down um down 30A where there are so many rental agencies managing properties and all those rental agencies are also they either have property management companies or property management integrated within their own companies or they use property management companies locally because these are available to them. Our market is entirely different. Our properties, and I think I've met, but I've probably mentioned this before, our properties, our cottage properties are, we could say they're concentrated in an area, but in Ontario, when you say it's concentrated in an area, it's a huge area. It's, it's not one concentrated community such as Davenport or Hilton Head, where one property management company can service a number of properties very, very easily. We have over 200 properties that we represent and we have them in Quebec, which is and the furthest one in that direction to the east of where our office is, is over six hours from here. The one furthest west is six hours near Windsor, which is on the uh, mi near, near the Michigan border. And the furthest north is around mm, five hours. And they are dotted all over the place. So we are not in a position, in fact, very few agencies in Ontario are in a position to offer property management because to do that, you have to have your properties in one concentrated area. It's just physically impossible. You would have to have um, contracts with, we'd have to have contracts with, with probably around 150, 170 different property management companies to enable us to manage the maintenance and changeovers of each property. So that was probably pretty long-winded way of saying that uh, all our properties are looked after um, by their owners or the owner's chosen caretaker or property manager. So we are really at the mercy of our owners to to do this right. And, and as I've just mentioned, the majority of them do it fantastically. Other, I suppose there's other destinations in North America like this. I'm pretty sure there must be, let's say, in the, in the upper peninsula in Michigan, maybe in in Maine, I looked at uh, VRBO and there's nearly 5,000 
properties for rent in Maine, and I'm betting that they're not all concentrated in one area. Same perhaps for the Finger Lakes of New York. Um, other, and there's probably a, or a lot more other areas that are similar to to us. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from agencies, in fact, that uh, that have similar issues to us because it, it's always great to network and and to hear how you deal with them. But anyway, let's get on to my list of of the issues that can be dealt with very easily. And perhaps, you know, it does require a little bit of investment in certain areas. Now, this is not to say that these are these are all problems that guests face. Some of them are just simply their current requirements, which have changed dramatically over the past five or six years. And where owners are failing to keep up, then they're perhaps finding that their booking rates are going down. So I just want to kick off with that that number one, the one the one I mentioned a bit earlier on when I was talking about my RV trip, which was about internet connection and having Wi-Fi. Do you know, three or four years ago, there were very few of our properties that had Wi-Fi. In fact, my own properties didn't have it. We didn't have any cell signal. We didn't have any method of of getting a wireless internet connection. And over the past year or so, new towers have been sprouting up and new methods of getting broadband connection have have appeared and in fact both my properties now have satellites satellite dishes that uh, that connect to uh, to that allow our guests to connect to the internet internet via satellite and some like my own home where we we still don't have much of a cell signal here but we have a line of sight um, Wi-Fi connection, which is fantastic. I often hear owners tell me that they have such a good cell signal at their property that inter- they're not going to get any internet access for their guests. And I think that is so short-sighted. I, have, I, I speak to, to rental guests every day. And in fact, looking at the, at the requests and the inquiries that have come in just today, I would say 80% of them say they must have a Wi-Fi connection. And in this article that uh, that was in the REMI website, they cite that Wi-Fi is ranked as the most attractive amenity in a, in a recent TripAdvisor survey. What they're saying is that guests have to have the internet connection because most of them are now bringing work. That's the only way they can get, to, they, they can get vacation, which is very sad, but it's the only way they can get vacation if they bring their work with them. And they can't do work from their holiday destination unless they have internet. And and just like when I'm on vacation at an RV site, a good cell signal won't do. I want Wi-Fi. I want to be able to connect to myself and I want my husband to be able to connect. And we don't want to do it through our cell phone. Um, for a start, we don't have the plan that allows for that. And and I'm not talking about streaming. I'm not talking about downloading stuff. I'm just talking about general um, surfing and um, and emailing. That's all I want to do. And I must have an internet connection for it. And this is what I hear a lot from our, uh, our, our guests and potential guests. And those properties that don't have Wi-Fi, losing out. One thing I would say is that people, uh, certainly our demographic that's coming out of Toronto, and the majority of them are so used to having unlimited internet, they don't understand that it's not always possible to have that uh, unlimited service in cottage country. So the majority of, of, of our owners who have internet connection have a limited bandwidth and limited availability. In my own places, we, we are limited to five gigs per week, which is enough. It's, it's more than enough for general surfing and emailing, but it does not allow them to use Netflix. It doesn't allow them to download music or or really to watch a lot of YouTube videos. So we have to be very careful to put this in our welcome books to say, if you know, once you've arrived at the property, um, please read this and certainly ask your children to do so. Now, we all know that people don't read the welcome book. I, ha- I now have a laminated sheet that goes it's the one thing that I put on my fridge with a magnet. And and really, it's it's just a welcome to the cottage. 
and this is your checkout time just so that they know that uh, this is garbage day or this is how you should deal with your garbage and uh, and these are the bandwidth limits on the internet so that's it my my number one if you're going to do anything with your property if you don't have an internet connection now put that on your do it list for next year because this one's not going to go away so number two and this is something that um probably if you haven't if, if you're listening and you have uh, a villa in orlando or or some executive luxury villa in a far-flung um tropical or caribbean island and you know who you are i'm sure this this little section is not impacting you at all because you know exactly what i'm going to be talking about when i say that cleaning must be included nowadays people are coming on vacation they don't want to spend the last morning of their vacation cleaning their cottage or cleaning their property now this is something that was traditional for many years in Ontario's cottage country rental market. And it was standard. If you go to a cottage at the end of your stay, you leave it in the same condition in which it was found. And you'll find a vacuum cleaner and a mop and a bucket and cleaning materials and probably quite the draconian cleaning checklist that tells you, you know, to clean the toilet and wash the wash and, and clean the hand basin and make sure that uh, that the shower tray is is well scrubbed. And for years, for decades, cottage guests in this area have been doing just that. But it's really interesting how how this is changing too. Um, and I'm I'm all for it. Uh, if I have guests that come and stay in my cottages, I am not going to have them cleaning their toilets on the last day before they leave for home. People remember the first and last. They remember the first impression and they remember the last impression. They remember that they had to wash the floors or clean the wash basins before they left. I'm not having that. I want people to walk out, look back and just remember what a fabulous time they had. Not walk out with the smell of cleaning fluid on their hands. So I know that it's standard in most parts of North America that cleaning is included and nobody expects to do it these days. Um, but I'm, I'm hearing from more and more rental guests in Ontario who are coming to our cottages that uh, they will only choose a property where cleaning is included. And, and I, I'm sort of on a mission, and I have been for a couple of years, to, to get owners to do something about this. And I know it's tough. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it's easy to get somebody to come and do that changeover on a Friday or Saturday. Um, but there are people around who will. It's just a matter of, of searching and paying them well as well. So, so that's my little rant about cleaning, and it always will be a rant um, until just about every property uh, supplies cleaning as standard. Number three is about access, access to properties. On a Saturday afternoon at four o'clock, we have um, this weekend, we had one, two, three, four, five staff and we sit waiting for the telephone to, to ring. And it, in fact, weirdly enough, it just didn't do it this weekend. We had very few calls. Um, but the ones we did have were mostly about access. The uh, The key code doesn't work. We've got here, we've arrived and you can, oh, sometimes you can hear the kids screaming in the background and and a very frustrated mom or dad who's probably spent the last 20 minutes or so trying to get into the property using the key code that they have and and failing miserably it just doesn't work we, what we do with our with our guests is that we set the lockbox to the last four digits of their home phone number because it it makes humongous amount of sense that you do that because the guests remember and then it's always changed at the end of every rental. So there's a security, um, you know, a bit of a security thing there as well. But occasionally, and human error comes into this occasionally, a key code will be keyed in incorrectly. You know, maybe numbers are transposed or something like that. And and we've, we've had this where one of our owners has perhaps um, 
you use the that they've they've looked at the sheet we sent them and they've put in the code from the following week or the code from the previous week or something like that. But anyway, uh, the upshot is is that guests can't get in. We ask all our owners to ensure that they have another key on their property, a hidden key, not in another lockbox, but just a key on a hook or hidden somewhere. And in fact, some of our owners owners have become quite ingenious at where they put this key. And, you know, one owner ha put, has put his key in a Ziploc bag and it's buried inside a, uh, a planter with, uh, with just a tiny tip of the Ziploc bag just a, um, appearing above the top. Now, we very rarely have to access these keys, but it does mean when somebody calls up and says, I can't get in and, and they're really frustrated and unhappy and we can say, OK, looks like there's an issue with the lockbox. Here's the hidden key. And within seconds, they're in the property. It's just fantastic. If we didn't have that hidden key, we, I mean, we did have a situation a couple of years ago where we spent an hour or more trying to get these guests into, into a property. There was no hidden key. And in the, in the end, we got a locksmith in and he, he broke in for them. Um, and I've, I heard from another, heard from another agency where, there, they had guests a similar situation. It was just impossible to get them in. We couldn't get; they couldn't get hold of the owner. They couldn't get hold of the caretaker, and uh, and the guests went home. And and that's the most dreadful thing to happen. It's just, you know, I I can't imagine how upsetting that would be if you'd got to your vacation destination and the kids are all excited, and then you just cannot access the property and you have to turn around and go home. Yeah, that's not something I, I'd ever want to have to ask guests to do. When you consider we've got something like 150 guests going into properties every week, every week there is some sort of access issue. And since we started asking for our owners to put these hidden keys around, we have had very few lengthy access issues, which is, which is just great. Happy guests. That's what we all want, isn't it? Okay, the next one we used years ago, or maybe not that many years ago, maybe a couple of years ago, one of the biggest issues we had was with propane on barbecues where, where the propane would run out and it always seemed to happen on the night that the guests had arrived. You know, that they, they arrive, they unpack everything, they, they kick open a cold beer, they get the steaks out, they put them on the barbecue, everybody's happy, and then whoosh, the propane goes out and the bottle's empty and there's no spare. And that too is, that, that's pretty monumental, you know, for guests who perhaps planned their first night on vacation for such a long time. They've imagined it, they've pictured it, they've, they've sort of, they've salivated at the thought of their first barbecue steak and a cold beer or a glass of wine and then an evening around the campfire and now they're faced with half-cooked steaks and having to go in and, and get grill going on the stove if there is one of course so our procedure now with our owners is to ensure that there is always a bottle of gas on the barbecue there is a full spare Somewhere in a shed in the basement, there is a full spare available. What we do with our place, we have we have three tanks, so that there's always a one on the barbecue, a spare in the shed, and the third one is usually in our caretaker's vehicle because she's taken when she's done a changeover, she's taken one away to get it refilled, and with having three, she doesn't have to take it away to get it refilled and then rush back and drop it off before the guests arrive. You know, for the cost of that third tank, it's amazing how, you know, what, what, a, what an impact it, it has on everybody. In fact, for the, you know, our caretaker's happy. She doesn't have to run backwards and forwards with it. She just delivers at the end, at, at the changeover. So that works really, really well. So number five is garbage. And in, in our areas, there is rarely anywhere that has garbage pickup. There, there are some places where there's a pickup, but that creates its own problems, in fact, because with garbage pickup, let's say you've got a garbage pickup on a Tuesday. So what happens when there's a Saturday changeover 
and the departing guests have put their garbage in the container and left. So the next guests are going to be inheriting that garbage. And really, if it's, if it's full, what are they going to do between Saturday night and Tuesday when the garbage collection comes? Let's say it's Thursday. That makes it even worse. The other thing is, is that garbage collection is often very early in the morning. And, and we, in, in, we, we can't leave garbage outside because of raccoons. So we have areas where a garbage collection, collection might be at 6.30 in the morning. So this is asking our guests to get up at 6.30 or earlier on vacation to get their garbage outside. So there has to be another arrangement. In general, in our cottage country areas, we do require our guests to dispose of their own garbage and take it to a, um, a landfill site or a local dump. And, and that's probably something that we don't plan on changing. It's just a factor that, uh, that we all have to deal with, that we have to get rid of garbage in cottage country. And in general, it has to go to a landfill site. And we cannot leave any garbage outside because of bears and, uh, and raccoons. So it's just important that our guests know what they have to do with garbage and that they're fully aware. And if every, and of course, every landfill site here has different rules on recycling. Every township is different. Our advice to our owners is to write a very clear uh, garbage and recycling document that, uh, that, that guests can see, they know beforehand what they have to do. And we often find if people have expectations laid out before, beforehand so that they're very much aware of what the process is, they really don't mind at all. We never ask, our, and I've seen this in, in many places, that, uh, that guests are asked to take their own garbage home with them. And, and that's, to me, that's a bit like the cleaning thing. I am not cleaning toilets before I leave the vacation rental. And I'm not going to pile my garbage in the back of the car either. I expect that 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 sort of sentiment is what many of our guests uh, are feeling these days. So please don't make your guests take the garbage home. It's not fair. It's not, it doesn't, uh, you know, the, the lingering memory of vacation should not be of the garbage in the back of the car. Now we talked earlier about having somebody on hand to deal with issues so so when somebody has a problem with access and and that's really important to have to always have somebody at the end of a phone in your highly populated areas if something goes wrong a guest can pick up the phone and speak to a property manager straight away and you that's pretty much 24 7 but in the more rural areas that's that's just not going to happen but it is important that they have that a little bit of comfort factor of having somebody on hand that they can speak to. I mean, let's say there's a power outage and when the power comes back on, the water's not working. And you know, that, that happened to us in our villa in Exuma in February. And the you know, power outage, power came back on, no water. And we were able to contact, we had a, an emergency contact number and all was resolved. So this is so important that there is somebody in, and if you're the owner and you're not available, then you should have a second contact number for somebody to call because it, it's tough. If you're, if you're in a property that you don't know, you're unsure of what to do, it's really important that there is somebody that, they, that, that you can call and, uh, and get the problem dealt with. So moving on to number seven. And that is about, this is about advertised amenities. And we had a call the other day from an owner who said, oh, by the way, we had a problem with the canoe and uh, so we ditched it and we're not replacing it. And this was on a Saturday. They were in, up there doing the changeover. They'd seen the problem with the canoe. They decided to remove it and they just thought they'd let us know about eight o'clock that evening that the canoe was no longer there. We've ha we have guests going in. And they're expecting a canoe. This this might be the one amenity they were really counting on. You know, it's part of this whole daydream of the of the vacation. Picture your vacation on this beautiful lake. Sun is setting and the loons are calling and you're paddling that canoe 
just around the edge of the lake and watching the wildlife. You've got the smell of the campfires in other cottages and the little twinkling lights are coming on in the, in the, um, uh, on the docks. And that's your vision. That's what you've planned for. That's what, for the last six months, you've been thinking about. And then you arrive at the property and the amenity that is so important to you is just not there. And it seems like nobody could really care about your uh, your vacation at all and how you're going to be feeling about it. And I have to say that would that would that would wind me up, I believe. I mean, we went to again went to Exuma in February. One of the things I was really counting on, and, and one of the reasons why I chose the place, was because they had paddle boards, and and I love to use my stand up paddle board. I would have been quite upset if I got there and there was no stand up paddle board. And, you know, I spent a lot of time on that board. If something goes wrong, if it's broken, you've got to let people know. You don't know what's important to them. Just because something's not important to you, it doesn't mean it's not going to be important to your guests. They may have been counting on it to to create vacation memories. And and it's just not fair not to certainly let them know and if at all possible to um to do something to um to give them an alternative or to replace whatever amenity has gone missing even if you do it over a day or you know if you can't do it immediately and certainly for this property we said we need to have that canoe and the owner wasn't prepared to buy a new one so we have uh, arranged for rentals of a canoe for the next three or four weeks, which we are charging to the owner. Um, and in fact, those rentals add up to the cost of a canoe. It, it just seemed to me a no-brainer to go out and buy a new one, but I, I guess that's uh, that's not going to happen. Number eight is being pet-friendly. There's such a high demand this year in our area for pet-friendly properties. If you're in a if you're in a an, a location where people fly in, this is not an issue for you. But where people are coming by car, I mean, think about it. 65% of American households now have a pet. People do not want to leave them at home. A, it's costing them a lot of money to do so. And and secondly, the pet is considered part of the family. I'm seeing that there is a much higher demand this year for properties that are pet friendly and owners that really go out of their way, not not just to tolerate pets, but to positively welcome them, are getting some amazing reviews. So think about that. If you're not pet friendly this year, and maybe if you've got a few gaps in your calendar, could be the reason why. Uh, number nine, we're looking at a checkout list. People want to know what they need to do before they go. And, and they'll probably look at it a few days beforehand so that they can plan their last day. They want it to be enjoyable right up to the very end. So the checkout list should be fairly short. It should not be onerous. It should not be telling them to clean the windows and scrub the floors and clean the toilets. It can simply say, if you wish them to strip the bed linens off, then then do so. Many people now just say, please, you know, the beds that you've used, please just turn those beds down. Turn the linens down so that we know that they've been used. Oh, one thing we do ask is that kitchen surfaces are left cleaned. We don't expect our caretaker to do the dishes. We've got a dishwasher, so we just ask that the dishwasher's loaded and perhaps switched on. We want furniture to be returned to its original location which I think is is fair, and outdoor toys to be put away. Things like life jackets and um, fishing equipment, we just ask for that to be put away. But apart from that, I don't want my guests to be facing this huge checklist before they leave on their last morning. I mean, sometimes they're, they're leaving early so they get back to the city and they've got a very limited time to get themselves and their kids all ready. And guess who's the one that does that. Dad's probably still out with the kids fishing on the dock till 11 o'clock in the morning while mum's packing up. So give her a break and just give her a tiny little checkout list. Finally, number 10, reviews really, really matter. It doesn't seem that long ago that we were into this great argument about 
live reviews and and how awful they were and isn't it unfair that people can say nasty things about our places and we've there's been a, a, a huge change in our attitude towards reviews we understand that 99% of them are genuine they are people that have stayed at our properties and most of the most of the listing sites do do have a fail safe system to stop people making a review if they haven't stayed at the property and you know if someone gives you a negative review and and you feel it's unfair well then you can respond to it not in a negative or, or defensive way but you have that ability to respond mostly to say i'm sorry we dropped the ball on this one it won't happen again or maybe something was missing that they liked that they they would have liked to have had and you can simply say i really appreciate the feedback and letting us know that we didn't provide this particular item that would have been useful to you on your vacation please rest assured that if you come back again and we'd love you to then that will be there for you next time it's interesting that uh, that statistics do say that properties that have one or two negative reviews will often have more views and more conversions than those that just have reams and reams of five star reviews those are the 10 issues that seem to be front of mind with people this year and certainly from uh, the the connections i have with guests and the reviews that i'm seeing it's one of these 10 that uh, that will come to the forefront in one way or another any form of um, negative feedback so i hope that's been helpful and as we come to an end of yet another episode i just want to uh, to thank you once again for for listening um of course as ever if you'd like to leave a review please drop down to the bottom of the page on the show notes and click on the uh, on the iTunes link that Mike has set up and you can leave your review there i'd like to make a shout out to a couple of very special people this week and they are Donna Martinez from cranchabalonebay.com and and Becky McIntyre from a Bisbee Vacation Rental.com. Both Becky and Donna have written fantastic reviews of my book uh, on hypnotic writing for vacation rentals. I absolutely love your reviews. Thank you so much for taking the time to write those testimonials. I love what uh, what Becky said in hers. She said she rewrote her original text on a Facebook page. And it, her original text said went something like, have you ever been to Bisbee in the fall? We have openings. And she said, blah, 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 blah. Here is a coupon. And she changed it to picture yourself sitting in the Toland Adobe's tree shaded private fence courtyard. Just a short four minute walk from historic Main Street. We have a few weekends open in October and November, and we'd love to hear from you. And she said just that simple change got her six times as many likes as usual and two additional shares. And she said that was a super quick fix. I absolutely, oh, just, I was blown away with that. Thank you so much. You should go to Donna's page at cranchavalonebay.com and just read what she's written on her amenities page. Um, she says, sinking your head into the pillows, you snuggle deep in your bed's luxurious linens and blankets. You reach over to find a carafe of fresh water awaiting. Awaiting, You awaken from your deep slumber, refreshed for the new day. You wrap yourself in Abalone Bay's spa bath robe. Is that the aroma of morning coffee wafting into your room? Or bacon sizzling in the kitchen, beckoning you? I read that and I actually had goosebumps because I immediately, I was there. I was there waking up and I was snuggling and, and the smell of coffee. It was just fantastic. Um, Donna, you've done an amazing job. I can't wait to see what else you and Becky are going to do. So for anybody who wants to check out my book on hypnotic writing, please do so. I'll put a link on the show notes. 
and let me know. I w- I'd love to see your before and afters. You know, before you change the text and then after, after you've used this wonderful selection of writing techniques that I give you in the book. And, uh, and I am going to be publishing some of these because they're amazing. And, and I'm so proud of you. Okay, so time is up now. I'm heading off, I think, for a uh, little boat ride, maybe a swim. Um, we have two such short, hot months here in July and August in Ontario that we make the absolute most of them. So once again, thank you so much for listening. I will be back again with you very, very soon. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business. 